Hello and welcome to the Brenton podcast series. Uh, today we are going to be talking about e-commerce and the impacts that the uh, current supply chain issues are having uh, on the global packaging industry. Um, Percy, thank you for joining me today. Um, Percy, I know that you spoke uh, at the recent CCE International uh, Expo in Munich a couple of weeks ago and you were talking very much about uh, e-commerce and what is happening in the uh, generic packaging industry. So um, one of the interesting takeaways takeaways for me was um, uh, there seems to be a misconception that e-commerce is only for corrugated boards. So uh, give us your views on, on how uh, packaging converters should be looking at uh, e-commerce solutions for their customers. Yeah, Dan, first of all, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to share some ideas here. Um, yeah, I mean, originally, and I think this is uh, quite a natural, uh, that uh, shipping was corrugated and still is corrugated. Um, but uh, you see today with uh, optimization in supply chains and uh, the matters that are that are taking place in discussions about regulatory uh, influences plus cost influences are leading to the point that uh, packaging is moving away from corrugated board. Uh, and uh, especially in the e-commerce sector, when you're thinking about a blouse uh, that doesn't need to be shipped in a corrugated box, uh, I think a good padded envelope will do it. Same for an, uh, a book with a, with a significant inherent stiffness, a normal box would do that as well. And you don't need a corrugated, uh, corrugated board that's uh, protecting that anymore. I think we will see dramatic changes there. Um, also launched during the recent increases in, in, in prices and costs for raw materials uh, that will drive um, brand owners also away from a, a classic corrugated box shipment. Plus what we all have experienced, I think over the last two years and uh, when you were buying online and you got a box containing uh, one liter of, uh, of goods in volume and you got a 60 liter bag or box uh, because that was the only one available. Uh, and then padded with tons of plastic material or, or chips or board or whatever, just to protect the goods from bouncing up and down in the boxes. And, and um, very interestingly, that you talked about um, price increases, um, because obviously um, for the packaging converter, their their raw materials uh, have gone up, obviously uh, extensively, particularly over the last few months. Um, but let's uh, look at the uh, the sort of the input, the raw material costs when we start talking about glue. Um, because obviously uh, an inherent part of any e-commerce solution is the is the glue uh, and also the tear tape application. So um, tell us a little bit about what's happening there, some of the developments that are taking place, because obviously converters, if they're looking at sustainability point of view, um, looking to maybe reduce energy consumption. So the whole difference between hot melt and cold glue application. Yeah. Um, yes, Dan. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, everybody in the industry knows that and has seen that over the last uh, twelve to twenty-four months. Is I mean, yes, uh, the market is booming. Um, all corrugators, all box manufacturers are are growing significantly. Um, in twenty twenty-two alone, the turnover grew by ten percent for corrugated boxes. Uh, for corrugated board, virgin board, uh, for boxes uh, itself, it was more than 15%. But uh, most of that was eaten up by increasing raw material costs. I mean, up to 60, 65% on, on, uh, on recycled board itself, recycled corrugated board, uh, up to 300% on raw materials, which obviously go down the, uh, the channel into the manufacturing itself. When you buy your glue, it's going to get more, 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 more expensive. Um, majority, obviously, in in uh, corrugated box production is uh, cold glue. Uh, but same as with hot melt, which is pure petrochemical, uh, you have petrochemical in, in, ingredients in classic uh, EVA uh, glues that are used uh, for for cold glue applications. Um, yes, we are significantly and heavily working on on solutions that are getting away from from uh, petrochemical based uh, glues, working intensively on solutions that are, uh, that are offering other alternatives uh, with renewable and recyclable, uh, easier to recycle uh, raw materials. Are they gonna be cheaper? Probably not. 
but uh, in combination with uh, energy savings for for drying for glue for for heating up uh, this will this will definitely be the way for the future plus we are we don't know if you look at the european waste directive um, then you will see and this is just a starting point to say uh, we will see what regulatory requirements will bring for the future plus um, what is the impact that a lot of the brand owners are going to have in the future on packaging by really defining how they want to have their goods shipped to support their CO2 initiatives that they're that they're running through uh, heavily. And, and uh, obviously you made a, a lot of mention and reference there to, to the corrugated industry. Um, is it the same for, for folding carton and for other sort of paper-based packaging solutions? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I think we will see, and we already see that uh, with box manufacturing, that uh, boxes, carton boxes, gray carton boxes are getting lighter in weight. So raw material used there in, on fiber base is getting less and less, uh, which reduces the stiffness, stiffness of the boxes. At the, so, but at the same time, we see uh, dramatically changing designs to increase the stiffness of the box itself again. Um, and if we all think back, for example, you look at your look at your 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 mobile phone, and you uh, you get that in the past when you ordered it online, you got it in a fancy box, and this fancy box was in a corrugated box. I think this will going to change in the future significantly, and you'll get that fancy box in a way that's by the way was sturdy enough to ship the goods anyhow. Um, so the corrugated was just a. <laughs> I think a protective for the fancy box rather than for the goods inside. Uh, we will see that changing dramatically, yes. And on the paper side, yeah, I mean, we will see a lot more shipments in, in craft paper and brown paper in the future. I'm absolutely sure. And um, obviously, we're, we're at a stage where the whole, um, you know, the Ukraine uh, Russia conflict at the moment, uh, obviously having impact on, um, you know, raw material supplies uh, and, and also obviously gas and petrochemical uh, industry. Um, obviously, being based in Germany, uh, your own company, um, you know, <laughs> you could be really in the crosshairs when it comes to, uh, you know, price increases for gas and for, for oil, etc. So, um, what, what's your sort of short term view on on the situation and how that might impact on um, sort of your cost base? I mean, cost base for us, we already see that. I mean, it's uh, the, all the raw material prices, and I think we're in line with uh, with all our other uh, market companions and our customers. Uh, raw material prices have boosted over the last year, and uh, it's it's very difficult to compensate that just through improving your performance and your and your supply chains. Um, what we see is a lot of onshoring taking place for us as well. We're getting, I mean, we had one major supplier and we have one supplier. We still stand with that partner in Ukraine who obviously can't deliver today. Um, and, and we have to reorientate our supply chain here, which is quite challenging for the moment because nobody's waiting for you. I mean, all companies are full of work uh, and it's difficult to find adequate partners right now. Um, but I see, and, and if you follow the press here in Germany, obviously Germany being one country that is uh, very dependent on Russian gas and oil, uh, not knowing what comes, we, we will see uh, which industries will be, will be uh, hit first. Uh, I assume that the chemical industry as one of the, the big ones will, will see the first impacts, which then obviously will have influence on, on the supply chain and our chain in, uh, in the packaging as well, because till today, majority of the of the adhesives used in the packaging industry is petrol based and um, plus coming in line uh, what we have all experienced uh, around about a year ago with the uh, texas uh, oil plants being down due to the freezing there for months being down and not supplying raw materials to the industries um, um, Harbors in China are going to be closed uh, due to COVID right now again. Shanghai is closed. So nobody knows how that will, in, in the medium term, impact our, our supply chains as well. And we need to be prepared for that. This is why we're actively looking for alternatives that are that a are, uh, natural resource. Uh, talking about uh, bio-based materials of different kinds that we are, we are currently testing uh, for the applications.
And um, Percy, I, I know that you um, are hosting a webinar in uh, a little later this week, in actual yeah. fact. Um, and one of the partners within that uh, webinar is NPRO. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the work that you've been doing with them in terms of you know, joint developments, etc. I mean, we have always and, and for a long term been partnering with NPRO, um, whereas that this is a loose partnership. It is, it is, I mean, obviously NPRO, same as us, are one of the market leaders if we're talking about e-commerce packaging and self-adhesive applications. Um, and it's a German company, solid grounded based company, uh, which we work, which we enjoy to work with. Um, it's a good partner. Uh, but we are uh, the supplier for glue applications and uh, we, we define together with Empro, we find a good way of, of bringing that forward, increasing speeds, especially. I mean, we're, we today and, and for a long time already are able to, to, to fulfill all the speed requirements that the industry really has. Uh, we have jointly developed uh, optimization of material usage in the process. Uh, plus what, what NPRO has other than others is, I mean, you have a contactless application of the silicon tape, um, which is really a great advantage if you're talking about speeds and reliability of the machines. Absolutely. Plus they're extremely innovative in, 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 this, in this very tiny niche that they're, they're in actually. And, and you talked um, a little bit there about um, obviously speed and accuracy uh, output from the folder gluers. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit, you know, about some of the solutions that uh, effectively, you know, converters can utilize um, without having to buy brand new, um, you know, folder gluers, uh, for example. Because um, obviously it's all about quality assurance, isn't it, and ensuring that every piece is right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, for us, it's one of the major one of the major challenges here was really to to fulfill the speed requirements and to ensure that we when we're talking about corrugated, where we have a, a dedicated washboard effect on the material itself, which differentiates it very much from paper and board, which I will touch base later on, is you apply a whole lot more than uh, adhesive cell or PSA pressure sensitive adhesive than than on a on a on a on a, on a paper or a a, a gray card. Um, and here it is really the volume that you need to apply. So you need to reliably be able to melt um, a high amount of this pressure sensitive adhesive, um, apply it in a, in a proper way, not too much, not too less. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, ensuring this volume flow uh, through the latest technology. I mean, this, this has led us in the last year to improve our systems again uh, changed, uh, especially changing on the melter side through through new tank through new tank concept and new heating concepts, which significantly reduces the energy consumption, plus improvements on the on the applicator side, uh, where we have an even even better uh, reliability and application than we had in the past already, which brought us to the point that we are one of the top players for um, e-commerce packaging in that sector. Plus the, the 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 quality assurance technology that we're using through the sensor technology in place, uh, not only for e-commerce but also for uh, applying a regular cold glue in the box production itself. And if you see that uh, that uh, the inliner production will will dramatically increase in the next years, assuming that our economical um, power globally will come back. Um, we see a huge, huge market coming for, for us in, in this direction. On the other side, we have uh, gray carton and paper applications, which we were talking about earlier. Uh, for, for many, for many uh, e-commerce uh, shipments, they, they are good enough. You use a lot less glue. You're, you're only running between 50 and 150 grams per square meter application weight, whereas in, in corrugated board, you're talking about 500 grams per square meter weight. Um, and um, therefore you need completely different technology. You need much finer uh, valves and, and applicators that are, that are running this process. And you're talking about higher speeds usually in a, folder cart, a folding carton machine or a, a paper processing machine, an envelope machine. 
Great. Well, um, Percy, thank you so much indeed. It's been uh, absolutely fantastic uh, catching up with you. Um, obviously, uh, e-commerce is here. It's staying. Um, plenty for the converters to think about uh, the discussions with their brand owner customers as to how they fulfill it. Um, so, Percy, thank you so much indeed. And uh, lovely catching up with you. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see you soon. Hopefully live then. Yeah. <laughs>